Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll be discussing the history of the dress code known as cocktail attire, its traditional specifications, and some alternative suggestions for meeting the dress code and still looking stylish. <laughs> Longtime fans of our channel will be aware that we take pride in the fact that we can decomplicate dress codes for men. We've got comprehensive PDF guides on the most formal of men's dress codes, like white tie, black tie, and morning dress, available in our shop here. Also, we've got a video and a full article that act as a primer on pretty much any dress code a man could find on an invitation. You can find those here. Further, we've released some recent videos on the black tie optional and holiday attire dress codes, and you can check those out by clicking the links here. Today's video will cover another dress code that many men may find to be a bit confusing in nature, that being cocktail attire. The source of this confusion is chiefly that when most of us hear cocktail attire, we likely think of an informal gathering, perhaps after work for something like happy hour. And while the sort of outfit one might wear in that situation is technically encompassed by modern definitions of the cocktail attire dress code, that isn't really what's meant in its more traditional configurations. As such, we'll start today by taking a brief look at the history of the cocktail attire dress code. It first came into its own in the 1920s and 30s when the social elite, who were flaunting the prohibition laws of the time, took to enjoying pre-dinner drinks and hors d'oeuvres in the early evening hours. More formal than standard business wear, but at the same time too early in the evening and a bit too casual for black tie or white tie, cocktail attire basically emerged out of the need for a dress code that would bridge the gap between these two levels of formality. Almost a hundred years later, what's meant by cocktail attire today then? While it's still a relatively formal and somewhat strict dress code, there is a little bit more room for creativity and expression in today's interpretations of cocktail attire. It can apply to traditional cocktail parties, of course, but also to other events like weddings, anniversaries, birthdays, and so on, and yes, even down to the informal happy hour gatherings we discussed at the opening of the video, although this is where more creative latitude comes in. What's most important here, then, is that you know for certain what the occasion calls for. If you're just meeting up informally with a few friends for drinks, then you could look at this as being a more smart, casual variant on cocktail attire. For more information on what we mean by smart casual, you can check out the dress code primer video we mentioned. Here's another link for that. If you'll be attending a wedding or another event of similar pedigree, however, you will want to stick to the more traditional interpretation of cocktail attire. With all that said then, we should answer the question, what exactly should a man wear to an event that has a dress code of cocktail attire? The short answer here is as follows. A medium to dark suit, a conservative dress shirt and tie, black or similarly dark dress shoes, dark muted over the calf socks, and subtle accessories. Given that there are now some cocktail attire events with slightly less traditional adherences to these rules, however, you could incorporate slightly more bold elements into your ensemble, though this will depend on a few factors. So let's break down the traditional conservative interpretation of the dress code first and discuss some of the variations along the way. The most traditional option for a cocktail attire suit which is to say, of course, that the jacket, trousers, and optional waistcoat are all cut from a matching fabric, is in a medium gray color, as I'm wearing here today. Of course, going for something even darker, such as charcoal gray or navy blue, is also perfectly acceptable. Because of its historical associations with country wear, brown suits should be reserved only for more informal variations on cocktail attire. 
In such situations, in addition to brown, you could go for something slightly bolder as well. Say, for example, a burgundy or an olive green. If you choose one of these more avant-garde colors, however, note that it should be dark and conservatively styled, and most often without a pattern. Conversely, a black suit would be much too somber for cocktail attire and should be avoided. For a video on how we here at the Gentleman's Gazette believe black to be the most overrated color in menswear, you can click here. No matter what color of suit you choose, solid colors are safest. You can go with a faint pattern, such as a light window pane or maybe a Glen check, but keep in mind that that pattern should be conservative and not overly loud. As far as the styling of your suit is concerned, you can go for single or double-breasted and two pieces or three, just so long as everything is cut from the same fabric and you're following the guidelines we've already laid out. It's not entirely unheard of these days for men to be seen wearing combinations of sport coat or blazer and odd trousers at cocktail attire events. If the hosts have laid out that combinations are acceptable, you can certainly wear them, although we think it's still best to go for a traditional suit. To provide contrast with your medium to dark suit, then, your shirt should typically be lighter in color. White is standard, of course, but you can also go for off-white or pastel colors like pink, yellow, or blue, as I'm wearing here today. A Winchester shirt, which is to say a shirt with a white collar and sometimes white cuffs, paired with a colored and occasionally patterned body, can also be an acceptable choice for cocktail attire, so long as the color that's incorporated in the body of the shirt is similarly light and subtle. Dark shirts or shirts in jewel tones, take for example burgundies, eggplants, and so on, are too modern and too avant-garde for traditional cocktail attire. Similarly to the suit itself, a subtle pattern can also be incorporated into the shirt, though you should ideally opt for just one of these, the shirt or the suit, to have a pattern, not both at the same time. Barrel cuffs for your shirt are a perfectly traditional and acceptable choice, although if you opt for a shirt that has French cuffs to accommodate cuff links, the links should also be understated. We'll cover accessories in a moment. Regarding ties, solid ties are a safe and acceptable choice, of course, but traditional pattern styles like small dots or micro patterns, as I'm wearing here today, are also a smart choice. Just make sure you avoid anything too bold, such as an oversized paisley, for example. Bow ties are a bit less commonly seen for cocktail attire, but so long as you're following all of the rules we've just laid out for long ties, you could certainly wear a bow tie with your ensemble without complaint. Smooth silk ties would be your safest option here, though you can opt for a bit of texture as well. Take, for example, a Shantung silk or a wool grenadine. For a wide variety of ties in different styles and materials, you can take a look at the Fort Belvedere shop here. When it comes to shoes, black Oxfords are your best bet here, plain and simple. They should ideally be plain-toed, but a conservative cap-toe can work equally well. Black Darby shoes, if well-shined and similarly conservative in style, are also acceptable. If you have a pair of Oxfords in deep brown or oxblood, and they've been polished to a mirror shine, you can feel free to wear those as well. Just make sure that they are very dark in color. For more informal gatherings, different types of shoes like a monk strap could also be acceptable, though again, they should be conservatively styled otherwise and dark in color. Anything in medium brown, tan, or other light colors would be too informal for a gathering of this nature, as would a style like a loafer, any other type of slip-on shoe, or a dress boot. Stick with Oxfords or very conservative Darbies. To be most conservative, your socks should ideally match the color of your suit's trousers. You can match them to another element in your outfit, say for example your tie if it's conservatively styled, but this is a slightly bolder option. 
It goes without saying here, however, stay away from anything in bright colors or crazy patterns, as that's simply too informal for cocktail attire. We have a wide variety of conservatively styled socks that would be appropriate for cocktail attire in the Fort Belvedere shop, and you can check them out here. As with the somewhat closely related black tie optional dress code, the area where a man has the greatest amount of latitude in traditional cocktail attire is with his accessories. Cufflinks can be silver, gold of any shade, or any other type of solid metal, and can incorporate conservative stones or engraving. Stay away from novelty cufflinks featuring logos or miniatures, however, as they're going to be a little bit too informal. Tie bars, collar clips, and rings can also be incorporated into your ensemble, so long as they're conservatively styled too. And as always, it's a good idea to match your medals as much as possible. Pocket squares should ideally echo the shirt. That is to say, white pocket squares for white shirts, and squares incorporating an element of color if you're wearing a colored shirt. You've got some degree of freedom with your pocket square choice, whether it be as conservative as a white linen square with colored stitching around the edge, or as bold as a patterned silk. But remember that things on the whole should be somewhat conservative, and also that matching your tie and pocket square exactly is never a good look. Finally here, regarding boutonnieres, something light to medium in color and overall understated is a smart choice. Of course, you can find a wide variety of boutonnieres, pocket squares, and jewelry in the Fort Belvedere shop here. Before we wrap up today, let's look at cocktail attire through the lens of some specific social situations, starting with weddings. Depending on the typical and or requested level of formality of the marrying couple, it's a good idea to adjust the specifications we've laid out above so as not to be overdressed at a given wedding. For example, if the marrying couple happen to be art lovers, let's say, and their wedding is going to be bright and colorful in nature, you should incorporate some of that color into your outfit. And for a completely informal wedding, you could go so far as to wearing a combination of navy blazer and khakis, if you so choose. Remember, the bottom line here is that the marrying couple should always be the center of attention, and you don't want to overdress or outshine them. Finally, if you are going to a daytime party with a cocktail attire dress code, one particularly striking option would be the stroller suit, traditional daytime semi-formal wear, and one step down from full morning dress. For more information on the stroller suit, you can take a look at this article here, and of course, consider our full morning dress PDF guide, available in the Fort Belvedere shop here. In conclusion, the cocktail attire dress code was born from a desire to host events that were more formal than typical business wear, but not quite as formal as black tie. As such, remember to keep your outfits comfortably within this level of formality. Overall, a conservative ensemble consisting of a medium to dark suit with a few tasteful personalizations will take you far with cocktail attire. So, is there anything you think that we missed here based on cocktail attire parties that you've attended in the past? If so, share with us in the comments section below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the Gentleman's Gazette YouTube channel and hit the little bell icon so videos like these will come right to your inbox. In today's video, I'm wearing a traditional interpretation of cocktail attire that's all based around my suit. It's medium gray, conservatively styled, and features no pattern. My shirt is light blue and also features no patterning, though it does have French cuffs to accommodate my cufflinks. My tie, which is from Fort Belvedere, is in dark blue matter silk and features a Macclesfield Neats pattern in light blue and red. Also from Fort Belvedere are the rest of my accessories. We'll start with my collar clip, which is platinum-plated brass and silver in color. 
My boutonniere is a prototype design in indigo, blue, and white, and my cufflinks are platinum-plated sterling silver in an eagle claw design and featuring lapis lazuli as the stone. Finally today from Fort Belvedere are my socks, which are light gray and feature a light blue shadow stripe to harmonize with my shirt. Of course, you can find all of the accessories I'm wearing today, with the exception of the boutonniere, in the Fort Belvedere shop here. My other accessory today is my pocket square, which is in dark blue silk and featuring a light blue edge stitching to harmonize with my shirt as well as my socks. And my shoes, which you've seen before, are my black cap-toed darbies. They're conservatively styled enough that they fit right in with cocktail attire. <laughs>